From Washington, this is VOA News. The United Nations says the number of people displaced by South Sudan's conflict is in the hundreds of thousands. And a U.S. Republican presidential contender apologizes for a scandal involving his staff. I'm Michael Lippin reporting from Washington. South Sudanese civilians have fled a regional capital, fearing new battles between rebels and government soldiers. Reports from Bentiu say troops loyal to President Salva Kiir are advancing on the town, which has been held for several weeks by rebels who support the president's rival, Riek Machar. Peace talks between the two sides remain at an impasse in neighboring Ethiopia, with the government refusing rebel demands for the release of 11 rebel detainees. A UN official also gave an update on international efforts to help people in South Sudan who have fled their homes. VOA's Margaret Bashir has more from the United Nations. UN peacekeeping chief Hervé Ladsus told reporters that some 250,000 people in South Sudan have been displaced from the deadly fighting that erupted between rival political factions last month. Ladsus told reporters after briefing the UN Security Council that the additional 5,500 peacekeepers authorized by the Council last month have begun arriving from other UN missions and should all be in place and operational within the next four to eight weeks. The priorities now for the UN are very clearly in this situation to focus on protection of civilians, on human rights and on helping our humanitarian colleagues to access those populations in need. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations. A U.S. official says the State Department has ordered Indian diplomat Devyani Kabragade to leave the country for allegedly lying on a visa application for her maid. A State Department spokesman said Cobregade was still in the United States as of Thursday evening, but he expects her to leave soon. U.S. authorities arrested Cobregade last month. The accuser of paying her housekeeper much less than the minimum, minimum wage and lying about it on the maid's visa application. India alleges that Cobregade was strip-searched and humiliated while in U.S. custody. Here in the United States, New Jersey governor and potential Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie has apologized for a traffic scandal that could harm his image. VOA's Brian Padden has the details. A contrite Chris Christie publicly apologized for his administration's involvement in a politically motivated scandal involving the partial closing of America's busiest bridge. I am embarrassed and humiliated by the conduct of some of the people on my team. That lower level, look at that. For four days in September, abrupt and unexpected lane closures on the George Washington Bridge that links New Jersey to New York City and carries some 300,000 vehicles on a typical day brought traffic to a standstill. Governor Christie had denied charges he or his team ordered the closing to punish Mayor Mark Sokolich of Fort Lee, New Jersey, for refusing to support his bid for re-election. Brian Patton, VOA News, Washington. The Afghan government says it plans to release 72 prisoners from detention despite U.S. warnings that they pose a threat to security. U.S. officials say the detainees were responsible for the killings of more than 60 members of the U.S.-led military coalition in Afghanistan. The Afghan government says there is not enough evidence to put them on trial. In Pakistan, people are praising a 15-year-old boy as a hero for sacrificing his life while trying to stop a suicide bomber from targeting his school. Itzas Hassan was killed on Monday in a remote village in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. Local police said the ninth grader saw the attacker getting off a bus and heading toward the school gate. 
They said Eitzaz tried to stop the bomber, who then set off the explosion. Eitzaz's elder brother told VOA that his sibling made their mother cry, but saved 500 other mothers from crying, a reference to the number of students in the school at the time of the attack. And Vietnamese construction workers in the country's north have fought with police and set fire to motorbikes. At least 13 people were injured. It appears the violence erupted due to a disagreement between the workers and security guards at the construction site of a Samsung factory. The South Korean corporation began building the high-tech facility last year as part of a plan to expand operations in, v in Vietnam where labor is cheap. I'm Michael Lippin for VOA News.